Hey everybody, welcome back to Fly Miata. Today we're covering the installation of the version 2.0 butterfly braces. All right, let's go over the components of the kit. Over here we have your front brace, a little bit larger. And over here we have the rear brace. Here's the assortment of hardware that you're gonna to use to install it. Now there's these longer 35 millimeter bolts for installation on an NA and these shorter 30 millimeter bolts for installation on an NB. So you will have a couple bolts left over. As far as tools, you're gonna to need a 13 and 14 millimeter socket and it also helps to have a 14 millimeter wrench. All right, let's get it in. If you're not sure what version of frame rails you have, an easy way to distinguish whether you have the latest version two frame rails is to look on this bottom edge. You're looking for captive nuts. If yours has three captive nuts per rail, that is a version two frame rail. All previous frame rails have no captive nuts. All right, we're gonna begin by installing the rear brace. So we're gonna need the rear brace and we're gonna need four of the M8 bolts that are, have that yellow zinc coating. Now, the only orientation we have to worry about is making sure the counter bores point down. Those counter bores are there to make sure once everything is installed, that if you bottom out, you're not ripping your bolt heads off. There is no front or back to the brace, so it can be installed in any orientation. Let's go ahead and get it installed. If you're doing this at home on the ground, we recommend using a jack to hold the brace while you get your hardware started. Now we're gonna tighten everything up with a 13 millimeter socket to a torque spec of 20 foot pounds. All right, now let's install the front brace. It's designed a little bit differently to where there's only two counter bores and those still point down and those are gonna to go toward the rear of the car. And for this installation, I'm gonna need the two remaining M8 bolts as well as since this is an NB application, I'm gonna use the 30 millimeter M10s, the spacers and the two nuts. So I'm gonna get the rears installed first just to get it held up in place. Again, if you're doing this on the ground, we recommend using a jack. Now for the front, this is where your installation might differ. Because we're working with an NB, our front hole is going to line up with an open hole on the subframe. That's why we need the bolt, the spacer, and the nut. If you're working on an NA, that's actually your subframe tie-in point. So there's going to be a captive nut in the chassis there, and so you're going to need just the longer bolt and the spacer. The spacer is designed to take up the space, the height difference between this piece of metal and this piece of metal. So we're gonna put that in between the subframe and our brace. So we will put bolt, slip the spacer on, and then work the nut in from the top. And we'll do the same for the other side. All right, let's now get everything tightened up. Again, these M8s use a 13 millimeter socket torqued to 20 foot pounds. And the fronts here, they use a 14 millimeter socket and torque to 50 foot pounds. Get a wrench up onto that nut. Now that I've got everything snugged up, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything to the torque spec. Now the clearance with some of the factory exhausts was pretty close. And depending on a couple other factors, you may have a contact. If you notice that you have contact between your brace, a couple things to look into. Number one, what do your exhaust hangers look like? The rubber bushings. If those are old, long, stretched out, your exhaust could be sitting a little bit lower than normal. That's something to consider. Another thing to consider is how old are your motor mounts? If you can rock your engine back and forth or if you can visually see that they're quite saggy, your engine could actually be sitting a little lower than normal. 
new mounts will likely bring your engine up and give you that little bit of extra clearance. On some of the ex factory exhausts, they're covered in a sheathing and sometimes that does require dimpling. So you can either take just a, uh, a rubber mallet and flatten that area of the sheathing or cut it off entirely. All right, that wraps up this install. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments box below or contact us. And if you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.